question one of the higher homework. We've got uh, three questions. I'm only going to cover one of them in this video. This question here, we're going to look at uh, finding the coordinates of the turning points of the curve with the equation given and determine their nature. Okay, so if I, I'm going ahead and trying to find the turning points, then what I'm going to be thinking about is differentiating to, to find the, the gradient. I'm going to try and find where the gradient is equal to zero. And from there, I should get my x values. Um, from there, I can go and get my y values. It will give me my coordinates. And then to determine their nature, I'll make up a nature table. Right, let's go ahead and do that. So first thing I'm going to do is differentiate the equation of the curve. So when I differentiate, dy by dx is going to be equal to 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. And from there, I'm going to set my gradient equal to 0 or dy by dx equal to 0, which, which is my, my gradient formula, as I would call it. And um, I'll find out my x values. So for stationary points, for sp's, dy by dx equals 0. So I'm substituting a 0 in here. dx squared minus 6x minus 9. I'll then factorise this to try and find my x values. Take out a common factor first, which should make it a bit easier for me to work with. So that'd be x squared minus 2x minus 3. I'll then divide this side by 3. So if you can imagine that's dividing by 3, that'll go to 0. And what that'll leave me with at this side will be just this part here to factorise. Factorising it, now that's equal to 0. I'm going to put it into two brackets. And for x squared, I know that that's going to be an x and an x that's going to appear in there. For the 3, well, the only numbers that can make 3 will be 1 and 3. And if I look at this sign here, this sign is negative. So that will tell me that either that one or that one's going to be negative. So I've got one negative, one positive. If that's negative, biggest one's a negative. And the other ones will be the positive. From there, I can go for x plus 1 equals 0. And then x is equal to minus 1. For the next part, I've got uh, x minus 3 equals 0, so x is equal to 3. So there's the two x coordinates that I've got there. I'm now going to find the y coordinates when x is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to 3. Right, so I'm going to find out my y coordinate when x is equal to minus 1. So I'm going to use the y equals equation because that will tell me what my y coordinate is from up above. So I'm going to go ahead and use that equation there. So I've got minus 1 cubed, minus 3 times minus 1 squared, minus 9 times minus 1, and then I'm going to have a plus 12. So I'm just using the equation, the, the y equals equation for the curve. I'll work this one through, so that'll give me minus 1. Minus 1 squared will give me 1. That'll be a minus 3 that'll appear in there. I've got minus 9 times minus 1 will give me a plus 9. And I've got a plus 12 at this side here. So just gathering these up, that should give me 17. So there's my first stationary point. That first stationary point is going to be x coordinate of minus 1, y coordinate 17. That's my first one. What I'll then do is I'll then use the x is equal to 3. So when x equals 3, I'll substitute it into the equation again. Right, we've got 3 cubed. Minus 3 times 3 squared, minus 9 times 3, plus 12. So if I work this through, 3 cubed will be 27, minus 27, another minus 27, and a plus 12 there. So this and this will cancel out. I've got minus 27 plus 12 will give me a minus 15. And that will give me my other stationary value. So the x coordinate was 3, my y value that I worked out there, minus 15. Now the next thing I have to do, I've got the coordinates of the turning points, or the stationary points as I'm calling them just now, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll need to find the nature, using the nature curve. So that'll tell me the, the shape of the curve. Right, so, so what we'll do is we'll start off by making our nature table. I make it quite long. Hopefully, you can you can see what we're we're doing in this um, part here. So along the top, I've got my x coordinates. So I know that one of my stationary points is a minus one, 
I'll put it there. The other one is the three. So that's the X coordinates of the stationary points. Now I need to know a point that's coming along from this direction. Okay, and uh, just before it gets to minus one, well, how about minus two? I'm going to look for a point that's in between minus one and three. Um, why don't we just choose one? That should be easy enough to work with. And I need another point that's beyond three. So I could use three, four, five. I'm going to use five. Five's a nice, easy number to work with. Although four, ten would be work as well. Okay. In here, what I've got is dy by dx. This is what I'm going to be looking at. I'm going to look at the gradient or the slope um, of the curve at that point. Now in here, what I've got an option to do is, if I just come back, bring this sheet back down. So if I look at uh, when I started to differentiate, I could use, see, I could use this point here, this, uh, this equation here, to substitute the values in, work it through and find out what my slope is, whether it's a positive number or a negative number. I'm going to look down a bit further. Um, instead of using this one up at the top, I could use that one, or I could use that one. I think I'm going to use this one here with the two brackets. I'm going to find that easier to work with. Okay, so I'll just write that into the uh, where the nature table is. So that's going to be the brackets I'm going to use x plus one and x minus three, and that's going to be really easy for me to work things out. Now, just going back to the, the minus one, that was one of my stationary points. So, at the start, I said that uh, the gradient was equal to zero, or dy by dx equals zero. So, that's a zero that will go there. Same, I uh, worked out the three from the same thing as well. So, that's going to be zero. Right, I'm going to substitute a minus two into where x is in the brackets. So, if I've got minus two going in there, I'll write the first one out in full. Minus two plus one. And I've got minus 2, minus 3. So that should give me minus 1 there. And minus 1 times minus 5 will give me a positive. And that's really what I'm interested in. So that's going to be a positive 5. So that's just going to be, I know that's positive that's there. Right, so on to 1. Right, so for 1, I'll just substitute 1 into the, the brackets as well. 1 plus 1. And it's 1 minus 3. That will give me 2, and 2 times minus 2 should give me minus 4. Okay, So that gives me a negative that's there. 5, I'll substitute 5 into these brackets as well. So I've got 5 plus 1, and 5 minus 3. So 5 plus 1 gives me 6, and here I've got um, 5 minus 3 will give me a 2. So that should give me an answer of 12 coming out there. That's a positive number. So I know the slope is going to be positive there. Okay. Right, last part of my nature table, I'll just work out the shape. Okay. So the shape of this uh, graph will be positive here. Okay, so positive, going along like that. It's going to be flat here because my gradient is zero. It's then going to be negative between these two points that are here. So negative. It's going to be flat. And then it's going to be positive again. It's going to go up that way. So there's there's the shape of, of my graph. That's going to be. So what I can see in here, I've got a maximum turning point. And that was at, uh, where are we? So this point here is x is equal to minus 1. And then I'm just going to look up the coordinate that matches with that. So it's 17. Okay, minus 1, 17. Here I've got a minimum turning at the bottom. So it'll be a minimum turning point, And that's going to be at... Coordinate was 3 for x, and uh, minus 15 is the y coordinate that's associated with that. To finish this off, I'll just write a statement, just uh, basically what I've got here. I'll just say that the curve, and I'll just state what the curve is. y equals x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x plus 12 has a maximum turning point. At, and I'll just state the coordinates, minus 117. And same again, I'll just say that the curve has a, and this one was a minimum turning point. And I'll just find the coordinates for that, that's 3 minus 15.
3 minus 15. And that's what I would have to do. Now this type of question, I'd make sure that I'm able to complete this type of question. It's a very common type of question that we'll see in your, in your exams, in your prelims, or any test that I would be given. That's something that I would make sure is uh, in the question. Okay, hope you've learned from this one, and good luck.